Okay, welcome. So I'm with my good friend Fernando Aguiar, uh, body psychotherapist and psychologist. And today we are going to be exploring the mind-body connection. Um, looking forward to, to having you share your wisdom with us. So thank you for, for being here, buddy. Yeah. It's a pleasure to be here, John. And I'm happy to share these topics, very passionate about them. Yeah. So, and I think they can uh, help so many people. And I think, I know both of us, we are focused on helping people. So. Yeah, awesome. Let's do this. Let's do this. <laughs> so I'm really interested about like what happens when we're young. So when we're really little, stuff happens you know, with these giants in our worlds and mm -hmm. we, we have these interactions with our parents and these key people and trauma can happen and wounds can occur and mm -hmm. we can make things mean different things and you know tell us a little bit a little bit about that how it affects the body and the connection and the wounds and you, you've been sharing some interesting stuff with me around this in the last week so sure take us away yeah uh, so if you think of a child from the moment of conception till let's say seven years old what we mm -hmm. consider the first childhood um, the child is a lot of focus on their bodies mm -hmm. their mind is developing but very limited resources mind-wise mm -hmm. to deal with life absolutely mm -hmm. yeah. so they deal with life through their bodies pretty much and there are there are five specific needs that, that happen through development mm -hmm. and when those needs are not met properly they can um, provoke or they can uh, give birth what we call developmental trauma got it um, and so when a developmental trauma happens means a, a core need was not met mm -hmm. and to deal with that unmet need mm -hmm. the organism will develop a strategy to deal with life Okay, right. tell us about these different strategies. Okay. So what, what do we do? How okay. do we develop them? So important to understand that as we are growing up, we have different um, moments of, of consciousness, of exploration of the world, and, and, and different intelligences playing out in our, in our system. Okay, so, what, so do you, what do you mean by that? Different intelligences, like uh, awareness or what? what okay, uh, uh, in, intelligences as uh, how we negotiate with the world got it okay so as we the moment we are born um, so this is a map huh? mm. very important to keep that in, in mind that's a map so map. don't 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 mix the map with reality mm -hmm. but i think this is a very good map uh-huh okay <laughs> so just to keep that in mind this is a map to understand better how we function in the world and actually to understand that uh what we usually think who we are actually most of the times it's just a strategy to deal with life totally and, and what we want is to go beyond those strategies to find the core of, of our being who we are who we are so it's, if anyone watching this there's times where we're, where we're responding in a way which is so quick and impulsive we're mm -hmm. trying to protect ourselves and this is a way in which if i'm understanding correctly mm -hmm. is a way in which we are defending this authentic core self with these impulses these strategies that we've learned when we're quite young exactly. is that correct yeah in life coaching we call them the imprint period so we're very young and we develop these experiences and these responses occur so perfect yeah perfect beautiful uh, so we are doing everything to protect ourselves mm. and must understand that those choices they are unconscious mm. uh, and they are all healthy choices in the moment they happen mm. So when we are born, the first thing we need as a little baby is connection. Mm. So we need to feel connected to this world, we need to feel connected to the people around us. Mm. And connection for a little baby, a newborn baby, happens through skin contact, mm. eye contact, you know, mm. that, that, just the presence of the mother of caretakers. Mm -hmm. That gives the baby the sense of, I exist, uh, I'm welcoming this world, it's safe here, I'm protected. Mm. and then the organism can go on developing naturally. But let's say that the environment was not so receptive, several reasons. Huh? That's how the, the organism experiences it. Mm. It's not necessarily that everybody will respond the same, mm. and it's not uh, necessarily that uh, a person could be born in a somewhat safe environment, but the experience of the organism mm. is what, import, what matters. Mm -hmm. How the organism takes in the experience. Got it. So we're, all, we're all unique, and so what I'm hearing here is just the, the different ways in which the child, mm -hmm. the organism, as you call it, mm -hmm. responds. And yeah. that could be any number of ways. Yeah. So, um, 
some, some, let's say the, the baby was born and, and the parents were going through a very difficult phase in mm. terms of, you know, finances and you know, struggling here and there, a lot of mm. stress, a lot of suffering around that moment mm -hmm. and they didn't have much time to pay attention to the baby they were like just you know making sure the baby was alive they had mm -hmm. so many things to think of and the baby might experience that as a lack of connection got it mm -hmm. so the choice the choice that organism makes is that um, feeling fully alive as i would naturally feel uh, is experienced as a big threat Huh? Right. Because I'm fully alive, I desperately need connection to feel that I exist and I'm safe and connection is not available, so I'm in danger. Got it. The only choice I have at that moment as a little organism that's still developing is to uh, withdraw the energy. Withdraw the energy. So what I'm understanding is the little child is reaching out to feel connected and to feel alive. Mm. It's not getting met, mm -hmm. so the only option is to withdraw and yeah. contract it's energy. With drawing contract. Okay. Is that one of the wounds you That's talking? one of the wounds. Okay. So the first the first wound the first need is connection and the first wound is disconnection. Okay. So how would that play out as an adult that has that wound? I mean is that we're talking withdrawing from the world, mm -hmm. feeling introverted, shy, what? Yeah. 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 So if if that's a, the main wound of a person, um, everyone has all the wounds to mm -hmm. some level. Mm -hmm. Of course. But we will present one or two or three more clearly. More yeah. clearly, yeah. So if that's one, that that one is the main one, uh, you will get someone that have a, a very introverted energy most of the times, um, mm. a, a poor connection with the physicality, uh, struggle to deal with very practical, down to earth things. You know, people can struggle with time. They they get messy around time frames. Got it. Uh, they deal. They struggle to deal with you know the bank and mm. and, and practical prat like cleaning the house. Uh, very practical right. things. Gotcha. They struggle with that. Okay. Um, also, there is a there. Sometimes the sense is that they are completely disconnected from their bodies. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people describe to me that they they feel they are just a head. Mm -hmm. uh, the body is, is there just to carry that head around. Mm. Some people go into ungrounded spirituality, mm -hmm. so they are into you know they went <laughs> yeah there you know that they left the building they left the building <laughs> uh, okay. and they just floating around Got you it. know you can Got see it. their eyes that they are not here um, so that all, that's all adapt adaptations to that wound. So it's an attempt to manage the pain of that wound. An attempt to manage the pain. Right. And none of that's right or wrong. It's just what the organism yeah. or the adult now is doing as a habit to yeah. manage that wound. Yeah. Important to understand that at that moment when it happened, it was the best thing ever that the organism could have done. Absolutely. Because it saved the organism's life, Absolutely. the child's life. Yeah. Maybe when you become an adult, you realize that a few things are a bit dysfunctional. Yeah. Right? If you want, we can yeah. improve them. To and tweak them now. Yeah, you can you okay. can help people to, to slowly, you know, release the pain and integrate okay. what needs to be integrated and develop what needs Beautiful. to be developed. Yeah. So tell us about the next wound. So I know there's is there five in five. Total? Yeah. Five in total. Okay, okay so we've covered five. number one. So yeah. a loss of connection, a withdrawal that can show up in a number of ways. Yeah. Okay, what's number two? Okay, we are, we are covering very briefly. Very briefly. <laughs> I, I, could, over. I could talk probably one hour. I know, that's why I'm saying one. number two. You keep me on track. <laughs> Okay. Uh, number two, so the baby is developing a bit more, mm -hmm. and and now the baby is more aware of itself and the reality around, and now the baby needs attunement. That's the core need. I'm talking about you know six months to a year and a half. And what's attunement? Does that mean someone tuning into their needs? Exactly. Kind of having a relationship almost. Yeah. Kind of going feeding on time or. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So the, the what the baby really needs is someone that can tune into their needs. Mm -hmm. Got it. Uh, uh, and what if the baby experiences or the um, that the, the caretaker is not being able to do that mm. you know, uh, they will start to experience that having needs is a danger right mm. so so having needs is a danger yeah that's the feeling that goes on that, that, that's experience the experience in that the meeting. goes on yeah, okay. because I have feelings and they are intense because I know I need yeah. food, I need shelter, I need protection. But no one's coming to no tune coming. to this. Yeah, oh, it's dangerous. Yeah. You, you so can, what happens? Yeah. What happens? What so does the baby do? What, what happens? Um, the baby, the, the organism makes the very healthy choice of I'm going to disconnect myself from my needs. So disassociating from yeah. their needs. From the needs. 
because to feel the needs is, is painful and dangerous. It's dangerous. It's actually dangerous. You know, right. it, you, you can think of you know a puppy dog that's left alone. It's desperate. If you measure the levels of cortisol, you know, it's in fight and flight mode. It's stress. Yeah. It, 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 it's dangerous. So it's life easy is to dangerous. disconnect from the needs. Disconnect I don't have from that. The I don't need. feel that. So, and, and, and what usually half of why should. What usually happens is yeah. that uh, the, the child will start attuning to the caretaker needs uh -huh. with time. And then you have adults that they are experts in yeah. attuning to other people's needs. Yeah. They but can I, tell from distance what you need and provide to you without you even asking for. Right. And look, there's a lot of benefits to that. I'm sure some people have that are incredible in customer service, sure. good coaching skills to exactly. tune into someone's needs. but. They're doing it at the same time denying themselves. That's the only problem. Yeah? Got it. Uh, the attuning to other people's needs is, is, is a beautiful thing. Yeah. But when you have to deny your own needs to have that, then, right. it, then you... Because behind, behind your thinking process, you're hoping that by attuning to other people's needs, someone will also attune to yours. Okay, so secretly you're hoping that. Yeah. And, and what, end up, what ends up happening is that you never really get your needs met. Got it. Okay, got it. And sometimes it's very hard to ask for help. Feels feels scary to ask for help to assume that you have needs. Okay, so that's that's core need number two or wound number two. Yeah. Any other examples on that one before we jump to the third one? So you other characteristics you'll see on on a person that has this strong wound is that. Uh, they either go into uh, I'm completely ind independent. I don't need anyone. Yeah. Or they go in extremely needy. I think I can I can uh, support myself. I always need someone to to hold me to support me. Got um, it. And I imagine they might swing between the two, from putting on the front of I'm independent. Yeah. I don't need you, and yeah. then possibly jumping into I'm needy. Help yeah. me. You will present something more on the front end, but yeah. there will be something that the other one will be in the back end. Got it. Um, so the, usually people, those people, they have extremely difficulty to receive. Yeah. Uh, just to receive yeah. the abundance of the universe, for yeah. example. They're struggling uh, sometimes with money because they never have enough. It's yeah. never enough. You know? yeah. It's like an empty, a, a bottomless bag that never gotcha. gets filled. Yeah. Um, Okay, yeah. and are these are these wounds happening at different ages? Yeah. Okay, so just tell us quickly again the age of the first one, zero to seven. Is that yeah. Right? So the first one is from the womb to six months. Six months. Yeah. Okay, got it. And then six months to a year and a half. Okay, so the second one is six months to a year and a half. Exactly. Okay. Now let's jump to the third one. Third one. So that baby keeps growing, <laughs> of course, as we all did, and it goes into more autonomy. Okay. So it's start to walk around, to talk, so mm. autonomy is developing. So that's the need. I need Got autonomy it. to explore. Mm. Uh, of course, I, 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 I don't need the autonomy to you know, go by myself to another city. Because mm. I'm, you know, I'm a toddler, like two years, sure. old, two years old. But I want the autonomy to go around this whole house. Yeah. And I know Check that mom and dad are around and they, if I need them, I can go back. Right. Uh, so that's the need. I, I need to feel safe to go explore and come back. Got it. What happens is usually you have a situation, an environment where the child experiences um, a lot of control, yeah, uh, and, and control, but not control in a in a in a harsh way. It's a control in a very loving way. Yeah. Uh, so oh, stay here with mommy. Oh, stay here with daddy. Yeah. Oh, but I want to go there. Oh no, but I love you. Stay here. You yeah. know, like. It, and yeah. then and then the child is in conflict because oh I really want to go there but my, my father and my mom is yeah. telling that they love me and they you might know? question their own ability to do that which may affect the confidence or cause yeah. them to contract am I right yeah so yeah. that's what will happen uh, yeah. as they as they face that dilemma of I really want to go there but I have to kind of go against my my parents love mm. I will give up my autonomy slowly mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And, yeah. Allowing what we call a value injection. Mm, so allowing exactly. the a lot of value injection. This the way. map of the parents or their belief systems uh, to instill that onto the child, mm. without the child actually feeling that to be true for themselves in that moment. Yeah. Contraction. No, yeah. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. And so the wound there is control, huh? uh, in that loving way that that's like the suppressing love. Mm. Uh, um, and what happens is you will get someone that on the outside is very, um, 
it's the word is very compliant. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's we call like a good girl, a good boy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but inside there's a big no. Right. Uh, so they're the putting only, on a fa facade. It's a like facade. they're compliant, they're yeah. polite, they're amicable, but inside they're like. In, inside they, they it's like you'll never get me. Got yeah. it. Uh, so some people would describe that to me in, in sessions, uh, like, oh, my mom would come and talk to me hours and hours and hours, and I was just pretending to be there. Mm. Uh, I didn't care about yeah. a word she was saying. Got uh, it. Or, 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 or things like, oh, yeah, they would come and ask me to do this and that. I would smile and say yes, and I wouldn't show up. Mm. Uh, forget, or, you know, because it's not like I. I won't go. It's just I forgot, and oh, I had a problem, and I couldn't come. But deep Got down, it. it's that no. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and 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 uh, usually, um, you will have someone who who struggle to say no mm -hmm. to to establish boundaries. Huh? Right. That's a very common. So it's topic. all wounds of the third. Of the third time, okay. of the third stage of development. Stage. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Anything else key on that one before we go to number four? Because I'm looking forward to seeing what we do about these wounds. At sure. The end. Sure. We're having a chat about that. Yeah. Um, anything key? Oh, I think we can move on. Um, yeah, there are so many things to talk about each of them. That's sure. A, yeah, All we right. can move on. Number four. Yeah, number four. Child keeps developing, and now it's more grown up. We're talking about three. Three, four years old. Three, four years old. Okay. Um, the child has a so it's it's a it's a beginning of that moment when the child is has more autonomy and it's more um, it's resembling more an adult. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, and what the, the, the child needs is trust. Trust in the sense. So important. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's trust in the sense that I can be myself. Uh, and I trust that you will still love me and support me. Huh? Mm. Um, I trust I can rely on you and you will take care of me. Huh? Mm. Uh, but what usually, if, if that wound has happened, what, what happened in the environment is that the parents, instead of being that strong, supportive presence, they became a presence that actually takes advantage of the child. Why would they do that? So. Uh, Sometimes really like you when you know when you when you behave like a, a grown up and mm. and uh, you know you behave well. I'm happy with that and um, you see interesting things. You're doing well mm -hmm. in school, okay. uh, but then if you if you do something that I don't like, I will, I will Boom. put you aside. So again, I, we're I seeing like the people. values here. The parents yeah. have their own unique set of values, and they're projecting them onto the child mm. and they uh, will give the child praise when, it, when they, the child does something that supports the values mm -hmm. of the parents mm -hmm. but when the child does something of their own volition expression mm -hmm. then they're getting that suppression am I understanding correctly? Yeah and the parents will usually use uh, manipulation to get what they want mm. right? and manipulation through uh, praising mm -hmm. most of the times so. mm. uh, so it's uh, so I praise you to get what I want sure and very soon the child learns the trick yeah. Uh, so they kind of start doing the same. Usually, uh, yeah. there's a lot of lying uh, in that wound okay. uh, because you, you just learn to play with it. You know? Sure. Um, there's a shutting of the heart uh, because you you were scared of you know trusting your heart and getting yourself yeah. manipulated, used, abused. Sure. In that sense. Um, Got it. <clears throat> so would that be when the when that wound has uh, grown up into an adult. Yeah. Um, how does that play out for an adult? So how does lack of trust? Or? Lack of trust, very difficult to open the heart. Uh, you'll see people that are usually, uh, they, they kind of stand on top because they like to feel special because that's yeah. where the place the parents put the child. You're special and you're special in something specific or the child tries to be special in something. Uh, could be uh, in school because it's very intelligent or sports or you know the child would find something that the parents consider special yeah. and they will try to go there and try to become that special thing. So you find adults trying to be special. No? Yeah. So they go for, uh, uh, I don't know, they want to be in positions where people will look look up to them. Look up to them. So the need for significance, like yeah. if we're looking at the core human needs mm. that Tony Robbins has put together, they're really wanting to find that and, and have that mm. met in that way. Exactly. Exactly. Got it. Okay. Um, yeah. 
So, and these people, when this wound is very prevalent, uh, <clears throat> there's a lot of need for controlling mm. uh, because you cannot trust anyone in anything. So, mm. you're always under control, a lot of tension uh, in the neck, you know, to, in the eyes to keep everything under your control. Okay. Um, a lot of suffering, you know, to, to hold that. that control. And just, just uh, re reiterating that we all have these wounds mm. to some degree, Absolutely. some just more prevalent than others. Yep. And also there's benefits and drawbacks to each of these wounds. Exactly. Um, and that, yeah, we're all human beings and we have them. Yeah, exactly. If, yeah. You, if you're if you being born, you have it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Glad I'm not alone. To some extent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so what are we up to now? We're up to the fifth, fifth one? Fifth, last okay. one. Um, so, so you're talking about four, five, six year old. Mm -hmm. uh, that's when the first time in development that we make a more clear contact with our pelvis and our sexuality. Mm. Um, so you can imagine that, that that child developing and the child completely devoted to the parents. Yeah. That's the source of the uh, everything. <laughs> mm. uh, so there's a lot of love towards the parents and love is expressed in whatever is present at the moment. Yeah. Uh, and when when the the development comes to the pelvis and sexuality, the child wants to express that love also through the pelvis and sexuality. Mm -hmm. So those are phases uh, where usually the child is really glowing and and, and uh, full of vitality, mm -hmm. um, and the parents get a bit scared of that, you know? especially because they don't know how to deal with. Uh, with the child's sexuality that's coming sure. out, they they don't, they cannot see, because they also wounded. They can't see that has nothing to do with how they do sexuality. Yeah. It's completely different for Got the child. It. It's not like they don't the child don't, don't think about genitals. Right. The child thinks about it's my body, it's my love, it's my life. Yeah. Huh? The adult separate things. Got hmm? it. Oh, it's genitals. So huh? it's again, it's a projection yeah. again from the, the parents' belief systems, Completely value systems projection. onto this child who's yeah. going through this experience of this yeah. energy, vitality moving through them. Yeah. And that can create a wound of, I'm going to imagine here, shame, wrongness, judgment. Yeah. What's wrong? I should shut this down and, and so forth. Is yeah. That, is that correct? So usually the wound happens in the very subtle way. Exactly. That's the result. Um, so very subtle, the parent cuts the relationship with the child a little bit. Mm. So let's say the, the, the daughter was always used to have a shower with the dad. Um, and one day the daughter becomes very interested in dad's penis. Yeah. Or the daughter uh, talks about how she how it feels good when she touch herself. Yeah. And then the father gets scared and he doesn't and know what the, to do. Then there's a separation occur because they want to, which is understandable from the it's parents. A, it's understandable. But the okay. child takes that as a, a withdrawal of love and connection. Exactly. Which is one of the core human needs. Exactly. Which means something must be wrong with what I'm going through. Mm. So the need is exactly that the need the child has is to experience at the same time their love and their sexuality. Uh, yeah. That's uh, the ideal, is to feel the heart, that's the ideal. which then makes this whole experience of sexuality a little bit more balanced. More balanced. Or connected from a phys physical perspective. Yeah. But what the child experiences is that when they come with that energy from the pelvis, the parents yep. withdraw well, and they, they feel, oh, there's something wrong about that. Oh, there's right. something wrong with that energy. And my parents remove their love when I, when I, when I present it. Yeah. So they learn to hide it. Got it. They, they learn from a very young age that that's a bit prohibited, wrong, you should hide it. Yeah. Um, and what we know with human behavior is that we are consistent with our, our identity. So mm -hmm. if we think something's wrong with us, mm -hmm. we associate, then that's how we act out in, in, yeah. in life. So I can definitely see that wound, how it would play out for, mm -hmm. uh, for people. Yeah. Yeah, so if you think you're wrong, mm. the only solution is trying to be perfect. Mm. Uh, so you can hide as much as possible that wrongness. Mm. And the perfectionism will come as an external action. Mm. So I'll try to, I'll become an achiever and a performer. Uh, I'll try to get appreciation through my achievements and my performance. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, very top class children. You know, mm. they, 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 they usually trying to get what they have, whatever will get the appreciation from the parents that that lacked, um, and then as an adult, what happens is uh, 
people struggle a lot with relationships mm -hmm. and they struggle a lot with commitment and they struggle a lot with feeling within themselves mm -hmm. because they learn that whatever is within themselves is not good what's good is what is outside it's their action they're doers they're always doing 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 mm -hmm. doing mm -hmm. always in a good great effort to do uh, they don't know how to stop because if they stop they have to feel inside there's nothing inside too scary so i just keep doing got it People that's that, huge what you just said it's huge. so they're not feeling safe to be yeah which is true expression of self mm -hmm. they're more comfortable with the doing yeah yeah totally. okay got it yeah. okay so that's the the five core that's wounds the five core wounds okay so now what do we do <laughs> okay <laughs> so each of those core wounds they are also a gateway so okay they are also a gateway to beautiful qualities so mm. I said those are intelligences. Intelligences. Yeah, they, yeah. They, they, they are intelligent mechanisms that we use at different stages of life to deal with the challenges we found. Got it. And when the t challenges are cleaned out or they are brought to, to peace or they mm. are sorted or the trauma is healed, uh, the intelligence itself can express in its perfect form. Beautiful. So yeah. this is the two sides. I mean, I'm a huge believer of, of there's always a benefit in anything that we experience yeah. so I don't look at this as this is horrible we're going to get this no. healed yeah, yeah, yeah. but in the process of healing and mm -hmm. recovering and learning from this there is this hidden wisdom that can emerge is mm -hmm. that what I'm understanding exactly yeah. uh, we, we can look at each core uh, wound also its own benefits uh, because they are protections the first benefits I that you've that. got protection yeah. from them yeah they protect you so that's the first benefit and there are more we could, we could we could look into but the greatest benefit is that usually we believe uh, we say oh that's my personality I'm, yeah. I'm like that I'm a perfectionist yeah uh, uh, I, I I'm always depending on people. Uh, I don't know. How, I'm. I'm uh, I don't know how to say no. This is, how, this I, is the this, way I am. This is who I this am. Is me. Yeah, but that's just an adaptation. That's just a survival strategy. I love this. So this is presupposing that there's something bigger than all of that. Something there's a bigger. you in there or yeah. an I in there yeah. that is beyond these behavioral adaptations that people think are their identity. And of course they're going to think that if they haven't watched this video, that they haven't mm -hmm. learned about the fact that they are more than these behaviors and, and what takes place exactly huh? great so once they start taking care of that and, and, and providing what was what, what lacked in the during development pr providing themselves what was not there mm. and, and, and going to the wound and expressing what needs to be expressed whether it's anger or fear or, or sadness whatever needs mm. to be you know whatever needs to flow because all that is in the body in terms of contractions and tensions mm. um, and, and, and that needs to be released also to, to for a more pleasant experience of having a body. Mm. Uh, you start to access the beauty of each of those uh, stages. Mm. So the first stage, uh, when you start to heal that wound of um, disconnection, mm. uh, you start opening up for uh, the reality of the, the sacred, uh, of the, the beauty of this world that goes beyond uh, everyday life you, you open up to the magic to you know to the beauty so just to break that down yeah, yeah. we're talking about like really appreciating a sunset or the smell yeah, of a flower yeah. or a moment where you, you look in someone's eyes yeah. and you feel a deeper connection yeah am I on the right track yeah we could or just a bit more present sure we could call that spirituality uh, but spirituality in a very practical terms just as you describe you know a Got beautiful it. music you know a beautiful landscape you, and that, that fills your that inspires you right. that really just being there and enjoying it yeah so that that opens up beautiful uh, when you when we start healing the um, the second wound, which is uh, the, la the the lack of attunement, uh, so yeah. rejection, yeah, uh, or abandonment. Sorry, abandonment. That's the experience. Abandonment. The first one, the experience is rejection. Uh, when you start healing that, uh, you become. You, you're already great in attuning at people's needs. Yes. So then you become great in attuning to your own, own needs. needs. Beautiful. And so you, you can communicate much better. And more authentically and cleaner. More authentic. Yeah. I imagine. Yeah. Do you know, hey. Secretly trying to have your needs met through that attunement. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, and then the third one, uh, autonomy. Um, the wound is being controlled by a loving environment. Um, usually beautiful generosity amazing mm. generosity so much to give so mm. much to give so you uh, you access that 
that that energy, that intelligence of generosity. Got it. Yeah. Um, fourth, uh, trust or um, betrayal as the wound, and you become an inspiring leader uh, yeah. because you have all that energy, uh, that energy that you use to try to be special. Yeah. You you gave up being special, uh, and then but you have this, you still have this powerful energy that can inspire people. Yeah. Uh, so you when you when you think of great leaders, they all had that. Mm, uh, mm. Got it. <coughs> And then the fifth, uh, which uh, the wound is the split between love and sexuality, uh, when that starts to heal, uh, those are the people that they are, they are great achievers. Uh, they can, they can, if they have something to do, they will do it. But then instead of doing only from the effort, doing only from uh, as a defense from themselves, mm. they do from a very connected place. Mm. within themselves mm. uh, they create beauty around them they are very good in creating beauty order order around them lovely yeah nice yeah. and I imagine their intimacy would change as well and intimacy would a change. whole range of different benefits you can you can be more present okay. in a relationship uh, and everything yeah great well thank you for taking us through um, I would love to look at and discuss now how do we work on these so okay. I know um, the beautiful part, what I love with your work, is that you're, you have the psychology background and you also have the body psychotherapy. So yep. you, you're well aware of the mind-body connection, mm -hmm. which we're getting so much science and evidence to realize that one affects the other. Yep. Um, we've got a lot of Bruce Lipton's work around how our belief systems affect our physiology, our chemistry, and mm -hmm. so forth. Mm -hmm. We've got this incredible book here, The Divided Mind. A um, lot of research done on, on that, which is fantastic of when our beliefs change, our values change, our perceptions, the way we think about ourselves change, there can be healings taking place in the body. Yep. I know we've enjoyed a good couple of weeks working together, mm -hmm. trading knowledge and sharing, and we've both experienced some, some pretty cool benefits. Yeah. Um, so yeah, anything you want to comment on, on that? Sure. So the way the body works in psychotherapy or in psychology is that usually psychotherapy you have people talking about that stuff huh? so they're talking about their wounds talking about their traumas mm. um, and that helps to some extent huh? yes but imagine what what you want is a change of behavior that's the, absolutely that's what you finally want couldn't huh? agree more uh, and, and behavior eventually happens through the body mm -hmm. so <clears throat> As the physiology was all affected by the changes in beliefs and psychology, as you were just mentioning, uh, that will affect the body with constrictions and tensions and limitations. Um, and then if we combine this, the, the, the talking work, you know, exploring uh, m mentally whatever the, the trauma is or the, the mm -hmm. issue is, mm -hmm. and then we, we add the body to support that, Mm -hmm. uh, so instead of talking about how I, I, I find hard to establish boundaries, oh, okay, so let's let's practice establishing brown boundaries. Get on let's the feel action. in the body Do how it feels. It. Yeah. yeah, go to the action, and then the person will experience when they try to experience to to, to establish boundaries. They will experience uh, the fears, the, mm -hmm. the, the the beliefs, the negative beliefs, the the, the splits. Mm -hmm. uh, in, instead of just talking about them, the person is actually experiencing as they happen. Okay, we're not the, talking about something that happened 20, 30 years ago. We're talking yeah. about something that's happening now. Right now, in yeah. present yeah. moment. Some people you know, criticize therapy because, oh, it's always about the past and talking about the past. Mm. Uh, but what I love about body psychotherapy is that we are dealing with the things exactly right now. Uh, mm. We talk about the past just to have a better understanding, but in the end, I want to change what is happening right Perfect. now. With, yeah. Right now in the body. Yeah. Uh, um, so there, there, there. I'll try to give like a one sentence uh, of how you work with each of the wounds mm -hmm. towards healing. Mm -hmm. So if the first first wound is connection uh, or disconnection, uh, you want to find ways to reconnect. Mm -hmm. So you want to reconnect to your body first first thing. Mm -hmm. And anything that helps you reconnect to your body from a massage to dancing to walking nature to breathing anything that happens to you to connect with your body will support you on that. Got it. And of course, as you try to reconnect to your body, 
first you will experience a difficulty in doing that because mm -hmm. not used to natural got yeah. it and, and and second you might experience some uh, challenging emotions arising like maybe fear or discomfort or pain mm -hmm. the pain was already there mm -hmm. just not no noticing Absolutely. before mm -hmm. second moon um, you have to start attuning to your needs so really stopping and asking yourself what do i need here mm -hmm. which is a big thing you know a lot of people you ask them uh, my, my you know, first or sec th second therapy session in my life a few years ago, mm -hmm. uh, well, eight, nine years ago, my therapist asked, what do you need? And I couldn't answer. Mm. I had no clue. It took me a while <laughs> to realize what I needed. Sure. So the first thing is bring awareness to what is my need? Yeah. What do I need right now? Right now, right now, what do I need? Maybe it's just a glass of water. Maybe I love I a mean, glass of water. Yeah, yeah. I love a glass of water, actually. <laughs> uh, um, but maybe something else. Sure. Uh, and then when I identify my need, uh, taking the risk of asking for it. Yeah. Which is a big leap. Sure. Uh, very for scary. Word, very scary. Yeah. Okay. The third one, autonomy. So establishing boundaries is the first thing. Yeah. So you can feel that you have a space for yourself. Absolutely. You have the right to have your own space and your own yeah. choices. Yeah. So anything towards having your space, your choices, uh, your autonomy back will help you. Okay. Anything. And it's very subtle. Uh, it's, the, it's the people you ask, oh, what do, wanna, do you want to do? Oh, no, tell me. Uh, yeah. Anything is good for me. Sure. Uh, so it mm, has to do with what is my need and I'm making a choice. Yeah. Uh, um, so anything towards autonomy will support. The fourth, trust or betrayal as the wound. Uh, the healing process is towards uh, healing the heart, like opening the heart, uh, reconnecting with people from a loving space. That's mm -hmm. what I mean by opening the heart. Mm -hmm. And taking the risk to fail, mm -hmm. which is the big one. That's like... Right. Extremely scary to go into the the failure. Got it. Yeah. yeah. Come across clients like that where there's just this terror around failure. Terror. Yeah. Terror. Exactly. Yeah. It's it's their life is in danger. You Got have it. to understand that when when we are there, it's yeah. it's life feels life threatening for them. Life threatening. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. And then the last one, um, love sexuality split. Uh, you want to reconnect both. You you want to reconnect. Um, your heart, your loving capacity, your affection with your sexual energy. Yeah. Uh, and what really helps is to start uh, getting to know what is inside of you, your feelings, your sensations. Uh, and the big leap is taking the risk to be vulnerable, mm. you know, to express and expose myself, expose yeah, my feelings. Absolutely. That's the big leap. So we're talking intimacy, intimacy. Into me, you see, and really getting there, <laughs> yeah. vulnerable and yeah. intimacy with myself, and then taking yeah. the risk to be intimate with another. Beautiful, and that is the hero's journey to do that. Mm. It's brave, and it's a way of of choosing to be. Mm. Yeah. I love it. Well, what an interesting insight and journey. Thank mm. you for sharing it with us. You're so um, I trust this has been interesting and valuable for, for those of you watching, um, and both yourself can help and myself from totally different ways yeah. um, can help recover and work with these wounds and mm -hmm. bring about shifts and growth and healing yeah yeah so it's a it's a wonderful journey um, yeah. and i thank you for your time fernando appreciate it thank you john <laughs>